lead the UN Human Rights Panel. That's like having Jeffrey Dahmer be on a panel against cannibalism. Uh, we've just got all sorts of craziness going on. Well, I, I guess the good thing, I, it, it might be crazy, but I still believe in humanity and I believe in man surviving. And 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 that the good will win in the end. I still have that belief, and I believe it's being shown right now politically in our country by the fact that you see the three the three leaders of the Republican run for president are all people who are not career politicians. And then you flip it to the other side, and you see Bernie Sanders, independent devout socialist, much like the socialism, and people shouldn't run from the word socialism. Socialism's practiced very good in Sweden, Norway, and the Scandinavian countries, and they have a very high standard of living. There's certain things we can use from socialism. You need a combination of both to make a healthy country. And so I see that as a shakeup of belief that I'm seeing the American people starting to, starting to wake up and they're starting to realize that we still can control it by the people we elect. And if we continue on that road, I don't think we've lost yet, Alex. Well, I'll tell you this on the socialism debate. Yes, if socialism is only partial and is implemented by a hands-off government and equally distributed, it can uh, create some pretty successful societies. If there's a larger free market system that's left alone, you can siphon off of it. But the monopoly socialism run by the globalists that, that George Soros and others are pushing is a system to control people, Cloward and Piven, basically, and it's very, very bad. And Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, wants to basically have programs that raise taxes to 80-plus percent like France and then the elite themselves are tax exempt. I just can't think of a worse system. I, 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 I cannot believe Bernie Sanders would support exempting the elite. I, I'm not going to buy that out. No, no. I'm not saying he would. I'm saying the socialist system. Well, being... Look at, let's remember something. Cert we've already proved socialism alone can't survive, and we've proved capitalism alone can't survive. You need a combination of both to have a healthy standard of living. Now, the problem with our capitalist system today is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, and that divide is getting so big that it's, it may never be brought back in line again. Why? You know, people have griped about a minimum wage. Now you're going to hear a shocker from me. Maximum. I think we should have a maximum wage. Well... The problem is the globalists have found ways to get around all of that. And, and well, like, whatever the globalists are, I'm just talking from Jesse Ventura. If you can't, if someone can't live on fifty million dollars a year, then I might support capital punishment. <laughs> no, I mean I understand extreme examples, and I get where you're coming from. The you know the point of the matter is that's the picture we need to look at, Alex. Is You've got this echelon, the 1% of 1% that are, that are, I mean, look at what's her name. I saw a show on uh, Farini or whatever her name is, the woman running for president. Yes. I heard a guy from Yale, it was on Smirkomish, Smirkomish had him on this weekend. He said that when she took over Hewlett Packard, that by the time she left, the stockholders' stock had cut in half, and yet she got $100 million in severance. Yeah. Let me throw this. Now, excuse me. That's what I'm talking about, capitalism being damn near, uh, uh, being damn near criminal. Well, that's not capital. That's crony capitalism. And, and, and that's well, it's just damn near criminal, where somebody can come into a company and the stock drops in half, and that person leaves and gets $100 million. I hear you, but that's what the stockholders allowed. Let me just throw in this fact, though. It's a great well, that's documentary. The reason why a certain amount of socialism is okay. Sure. Let me just throw this at you, and, and then I want to hit a few phone calls because you've got to leave here in just about five minutes. I want to throw this out there. I saw an excellent documentary, and I was already aware of the numbers, but to see the debates from the uh, 1970s, it was a debate between um, William F. Buckley and Gore Vidal. It was on NBC. It was a whole series of them, uh, you know, during the whole Nixon re-election campaign. And during that, they were pointing out that 
the top 5% had like 30% of the wealth and that socialism was the answer to fix it. Well, we've got higher taxes, more regulations, more socialism, and now it's 1% with 55, 60% of the wealth. And I'm just saying they're always going to game it, Jesse. The only way to not game it is to have incredibly low taxes across the board, and then that's the only thing that allows the free market to flourish. Well, what, what's better than that? Go to my method. Get rid, Abolish the income tax. I agree. Go to a national sales tax. If you really get rid of the income tax, then I would be for that. Abolish the income tax and go to a national sales tax. Then everybody pays, and wealth is determined by what you buy, not what you make. I totally agree. That's the way to go. Jesse Ventura is our guest. I'm Alex Jones, your host. We just skipped this break. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Ronnie in Texas. You're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Go ahead, Ronnie. Thank you, sir. Yes, I agree. Dr. Rand Paul is, I think, the best candidate. He's anti-war, anti-Trump, anti the ongoing counterproductive war on pot smokers. He's anti-NDAA. He filibustered it. So I believe uh, it's up to you and me and all of us to uh, differentiate the real Dr. Rand Paul from all those other uh, uh, corrupt politicians. All right, and, let, me, uh, let me jump from there, and I think your question is, what, Jesse, is your view of Rand Paul? Well, I, I, I agree with many of Rand Paul's issues. I, I stand with him solidly about getting our military get out of the Middle East. I stand with him on ending the war on drugs. If I, I had a guy on my show, a 10-year police officer in Baltimore, who told me the militarization of America right now is directly the of fact of the war on drugs. Absolutely. That's what caused it. Absolutely. Decriminalize now. Ronnie, thank you for the stop call. Stop the war on drugs and you'll stop seeing these big vehicles ramming people's doors down and, and coming and violating our constitutional rights every day. Absolutely. Let's go to Jeff in California. You're on the air, Jeff. Go ahead. Hey, Alex and Jesse, what do you guys think of this? David Knight for president in 2016. He'd make a great president. Sure. Seriously, what's your Ooh. question? Uh, David Knight's a reporter here at InfoWars, Governor. Oh, okay. I, you, you caught me on that one. Little inside baseball. That. Jeff, do you, do you have another point? Well, no, I man. If you guys could throw one more money bomb and throw him on the ticket, he, he has the best campaign uh, of what he says. Well, you know, I'll vote for him. David Knight's a great guy. I appreciate your call. Uh, Kevin in Florida, you're on the air with Jesse Ventura. Go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Um, my question is... Uh, Governor Ventura, why are you so pro open border? I don't want to sound like I'm against open borders, but the majority of people that are coming over here illegally are not trying to do it the right way. They're here. They're here for the free money, the free medical care, the free health care. Uh, free well, housing. Why aren't you blaming our system and our politicians who made it all available to them? If that's the case, I don't necessarily believe what you're saying there, but if that's the case, why aren't you angry at the Democrats and Republicans for creating a system that allows these people to get on it? Yeah, for the caller, I mean, I get what Ventura is saying. He's saying, don't make it about the individual that's just trying to escape poverty. Make it about the system that allows it. It's like, instead of blaming the TSA, how about we blame Congress who actually put this in place, let's get rid of it and just face the danger uh, of the so-called terrorism. And I think the airlines would even make more money. What do you think, Jesse? Well, again, you know, people are, are not going to the root of the problem. That's the point, Alex. You know, and I don't buy, you know, everybody wants to stop. Everyone forgets, unless you're Native American, you immigrated here. And the majority of illegal immigrants, guess what? They come in by plane. They don't come across the border. No, I know. That's certainly now. The they come in by airplane. And I don't think they're full of Mexicans necessarily. This whole border, I'll tell you what, this country's behaving like 1930s Germany right now. We want the biggest, toughest military. We're going to kick everybody's ass. And we're putting every blame of every ill thing in this country on the Mexicans, just like the Germans did to the Jews. Well, I think the case here is a little bit different because you got Latin America collapsing. Uh, Mexico was the biggest group of immigrants. It is Chinese now. I don't care whether they're white, Chinese, whatever. I shouldn't have to pay for an anchor baby. I can't go to China and pay for it. 
Well, uh, then let's lead the charge and let's take down the statue. I know. I already heard all that. No, no, do. no. It's what you said. We should get rid of the incentives because I'm all no, for no, immigration no, no. as long as we... the Statue of Liberty, Alex. No, I think we'll take down take paying for down. folks, baby. I think we'll... Take it down. I think we'll pay... Sure, I say I don't. I think it's ugly. I say get rid of it. I agree with you. Take it down because it says send us your poor, send us your down. Well, that's not in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. That we was the Masons that sent it over. And we want your doctors and lawyers. So take the Statue of Liberty down. I, I agree. Take it down. Take it down. I think we ought to sell tickets and uh, you know put a rocket ship under it and shoot it to the moon. How's that sound? And and let's not be racist. We need a wall at Canada too. Absolutely. I, I think we ought to have robots patrolling the border. <laughs> Listen, and then, we can, and then we can call ourselves the United States of East Berlin. <laughs> no, uh, no. See, excuse me. Didn't Ronald Reagan say once, "Tear that tear wall down that down. wall"? Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, well, what, what about Me let, let me let me say what something? What about Mexico the and their wall? Mexico has their most Ronald draconian Reagan. immigration laws in the Americas, but it's okay when they do it, right? Because Mex Mexico has their most draconian immigration laws for Central Americans and one-year hard labor if they catch you coming in. You, I mean, you know they got a big fence down there, right? So will you no, say, Mexico, tear down that Guatemalan wall? No, I don't know anything about that. I've ah. never been down there. All I know is I live 950 miles down there and I ain't seen a wall. I think you should run for president of Mexico. That I should? I can't. I'm not Mexican. Well, they should let you and you should be able to have babies for free. I think no. you ought to... Jesse, we love you. Let me say bye to you during the break. Third hour coming up, Infowars.com. Oh, get rid of the Statue of Liberty. Get rid of it. And I tell you, that was a heated discussion with Jesse Ventura. We just argue more and more on air. And, you know, Jesse really believes what he believes. He really believes uh, in the justice of it. And he really believes in the fairness aspect of it. But it's not fair that Mexico has a wall, a fence, and puts Guatemalans in forced labor for a year, but then expects everybody to come up here and have everything for free, and that Mexico teaches a liberation theology uh, and teaches that the Southwest belongs to Mexico when Russia had California, you know, uh, uh, Spain had Texas, the French had Texas and Louisiana. That's why there's six flags over Texas. There were a bunch of empires. I mean, for heaven's sakes, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire, ran Mexico for off and on for 60 years after Spain left. Uh, so it's, it's just crazy. But like if Russians started claiming that they had some take on California or Alaska, well, you may have a couple hundred years ago, but you don't now. And I'm not anti-Russian that I say that. The globalists have conquered America. The globalists are conquering all our countries and playing us off against each other. And I, I, I don't think it's a fair debate uh, to... Just play the card that it's racist to say that, um, you know, Mexicans uh, are, are, are bad if you're for, you know, uh, the borders being closed. But that people aren't saying Mexicans are evil inherently because we don't want the border completely wide open. This isn't Mexico. I mean, I can't even go down to Mexico and own land except in small controlled areas. I don't have rights as an American down there. If Mexico reciprocated and treated us the same, then we could have a treaty and more open borders. But it's just not a one-way street. And I don't like to debate Ventura when we're short on time with a big question like, do you want to get rid of the Statue of Liberty? I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's send it to the moon. Let's send it to Mars. Uh, quite frankly, it's an Illuminati symbol. Uh, quite frankly, it's obnoxious. Uh, quite frankly, uh, it's a globalist instrument of propaganda, and I personally don't like the Statue of Liberty. Uh, I think it's an interesting piece of art, but it's a man in drag. Uh, the the maker of it admitted that. It's not even what people think it is. Uh, and, you know, it sits there and says, give me your tired, give me your hungry, give me your starving. That's not what this country was about. This country was, give us your freebooters, give us your your swashbucklers, give us your builders, Give us your your strivers. Give us your trailblazers. Give us your rugged individualist. And coming up in studio at the bottom of the hour, you want to hear about the migrants, as they call them. First, don't call them illegals. Then just call them uh, uh, migrants. So it's all part of this UN global agenda where groups can migrate wherever they want.
So the globalists can selectively bring in giant hordes of people who don't integrate so that they can have a divide and conquer strategy. And it just gives me a headache that the people